In August of 2006, a cottage on the south side of Hen Island caught fire after a 100-pound propane tank ignited. Luckily, in this instance, it did not explode, although it easily could have injuring or killing the gentleman you see on the right side of the photo or neighbors from surrounding cottages. The flames were visible as far away as New York City. As a result, the New York City Marine Fire Unit responded to the fire, along with fireboats from Rye, Mamaroneck, New Rochelle, and Port Chester. Eyewitnesses reported flames in excess of 100 feet into the sky. Flames were visible along Westchester's shoreline, even though there was no direct line of sight to Hen Island. Again, this was the result of only one tank. This unnecessary fire jeopardized the lives of the responding firefighters as well as every man, woman, and child present on the island that day, not to mention the unsuspecting boaters in the harbor. All of this could have been avoided had safety codes been enforced on Hen Island as required by law. Now, nearly two years after this near disaster, the city of Rye has yet to inspect any electrical or propane installations on Hen Island. In a Journal News article on September 4, 2007, city manager Paul Shu was quoted as saying, It's private property. We have to get permission to go on site. If there's something that comes to our attention, we'll look at it. One would think that this fire should have come to the attention of Mr. Shu. We return now to Cottage 9. As you look toward the visible portion of the chimney extending from the lower roof of the shed, you'll see the flue from the hot water heater referred to earlier. State and local building codes call for the top of the flue to be vented well above the upper roof line and not nearing any windows, thus eliminating the possibility of carbon monoxide downdraft entering the residence through the window. This window is located in a small bathroom at the rear of the cottage, making the occupants particularly susceptible to asphyxiation in these small spaces. As this photo so clearly illustrates, this is another accident just waiting to happen as a result of negligence on the part of local enforcement officials. But it also points to a larger problem. Most of these installations were performed by homeowners unaware of the dangers to themselves by not complying with the building codes. Other installations were done by unlicensed or unscrupulous contractors who know that the building department will not be inspecting these sites. Either way, life-threatening conditions are created for the unsuspecting homeowners. Cottage 29, owned by Gary Ederer, was issued a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals, ZBA, at the February 21st meeting. Mr. Ederer, in his application, stated, quote, This cottage was originally built to be a summer home and has always been used as a summer home. It was damaged by a fallen tree and is in disrepair, end quote. This is inaccurate for a number of reasons. Mr. Ederer fails to mention or distorts a few issues. From 1984, when the cottage was first sold to Mrs. DeForio, the structure was used as a storage shed and then abandoned. The reason the DeForios purchased the cottage was as a physical screen to ensure their privacy from the neighboring cottage. Mr. Ederer's claim in his application that, quote, the structure has always been used as a cottage, end quote, is false. In 1997, a large tree fell on the cottage and remained on the structure until 2001. The blue tarp still covers the hole in the roof that the tree made. Mr. DeForio testified at the ZBA meeting that the structure, quote, has not been used as a residence since 1997, end quote. That statement is not only untrue, but in itself is enough to require a use variance, which is what the Rye Building Inspector directed the owner to apply for. City of Rye tax records were submitted showing the ZBA that the cottage has indeed been abandoned since at least 1994 and hence would not qualify to have ancient, unsanitary water systems grandfathered in. The ZBA, however, concluded that continual use was proven thanks to Mr. DeForio's testimony, inappropriately chose to ignore the facts, and approved another type of variance altogether, an area variance. The result? Freed from the constraints of the use variance, the owner saved hundreds of thousands of dollars by not being required to drill a well or install a code-compliant septic system. Thus, he is allowed to continue to pollute the waters of the Long Island Sound and or the aquifer below and to endanger the health and safety of the cottage residents. He also expands the liability exposure of the stockholders of Hen Island Corporation 
by not installing potable water in the cottage. Why is the Rye Zoning Board of Appeals not requiring Hen Island to come in compliance? This decision is currently in the appeals process in the Westchester County Court. This eyesore is Cottage 22. It's been abandoned for more than 12 years. Some repairs were begun 14 years ago but were never completed. Here too we have another crumbling structure that is an attractive nuisance, a playhouse waiting to hurt someone. If this structure existed within the city limits of Rye, the building department would have it condemned and demolished within a week. Why has it been allowed to stay in its present condition on Hen Island for so long? This photo is of a steel staircase leading from the front of Cottage 8 down to the shoreline. The total distance of the stairs is approximately 10 to 12 feet. This picture truly speaks a thousand words. Imagine a child left to roam and play on Hen Island during a hot summer. Now imagine that child encountering this steel staircase. It is rotted by the left side railing and on the top landing. It is missing a rail on the right side. The steps leading to the water are corroded. It's just a matter of time before someone falls down these stairs. Why hasn't the city of Rye addressed this obviously dangerous situation and issued violations? Five years ago, the owner of this dock neglected to remove the ramp for the winter, and as a result, the front section closest to the water collapsed. Repairs were begun three years ago, but never completed. The construction repair material has been there since repair efforts were abandoned. This dock has no barriers to stop children from going on it, and no barriers or railings at the end to stop them from falling off into the water ten feet below, depending on tide height. What you're seeing in the center is the detached patio deck of Cottage 21. When a storm struck Han Island in 1997, the deck was detached from its cottage and carried over 15 feet away. When the owner appropriately tried to have the deck reattached, the board of directors at Han Island refused, arguing that residents should have an uninterrupted walkway between the cottages and the water. As of 2008, the patio is still in the same location moved to as a result of the storm. It also sits along the shoreline, making it possible for it to float away during storm surges or super high tides. If this were to happen, it would be a hazard to both navigation and homes located along the shore. Imagine the results of a small vessel hitting this 15 by 15 foot floating dock just below the waterline a few days after the storm. The physical injury to people on the boat would be devastating. The city of Rye has refused to mandate any kind of repair, and the Hen Island Board of Directors has shown an equal amount of indifference to these safety concerns. The city of Rye and the county of Westchester irresponsibly place people and the environment in harm's way. There seems to be no regard for the potential destruction possible every day these violations are allowed to continue. We encourage everyone to please join our mailing list, write a letter, spread the word, or donate your time to help heal the harbor starting today.